Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea and today I would like to share with you my non-fiction November TBR and to give you some recommendations of other books that could fit in the categories. So if you don't know what non-fiction November is and you don't know what the prompts are, I have made a video last week introducing this topic and introducing non-fiction November. It is a very dominant reading initiative on booktube where we read non-fiction for the month of November. So these are the four prompts uh, which are just created to make this a fun reading experience. First reading prompt is time. So for this challenge I will be reading Time Lord by Clark Blaze. This is a book about Sanford Fleming who is a Scottish Canadian and he contributed a lot to Universal Standard Time, created the first Canadian stamp, and he also contributed a lot to the Canadian Railway. My understanding is it has something to do with all the international timelines and bringing them somehow together and unifying them, as well as standardizing the 24-hour clock rule as a thing. But I could be entirely wrong because I have not read this yet. I just gathered that from parts of the description. It just sounds like he's kind of a renaissance man and he's contributed a lot. So two books that I would recommend that I've read that have to do with time are Timekeepers by Simon Garfield where he looks at our obsession with time and kind of the beginnings of measuring time and how in mainstream media people always try to sell us time because all of the tools and gadgets are always designed to save you time, promote your time um, in terms of makeup and wrinkles to like make you look ageless. We always try to control it. Information bits that he shares, they're kind of covering a lot of human history and they make you really think about time in a different way. The second book is James Gleick's book Time Travel. So this book actually engages more with literature. It kind of starts with The Time Machine, written by H.G. Wells. He argues that from all of the writings that had to do with time prior to that book being written, people never considered the past as something that unifies their present or thought about the future all that much. People were very much in the moment in many ways and living within their lifespan and the way they saw life was a lot more connected to religious beliefs and seeing life as a series of places you're in. And when the time machine was dropped, suddenly people thought about time differently. And there's also this kind of element of, you know, maybe one day I'll get to travel to the past and then all my knowledge about medieval period stuff will be useful. Um, just the way we think about it and the way it's entered our imagination and that's kind of the key one because afterwards a lot of science fiction works and a lot of you know movies and radio shows and whatever has followed with different forms of media we have people playing with the idea of time travel. The book is very short but it once again makes you think about time slightly differently than you had before. The second reading challenge is movement. And it's funny because when I thought of movement, my first thought was kinetic movement and energy and things to do with the human body. But then I thought of a book I really wanted to read for a while and it's actually connected to the women's movement. So this is Rise Up Women by Diane Atkinson, The Remarkable Lives of the Suffragettes. This book is published by Bloomsbury and it's very thick. This kind of looks at Mrs. Pankhurst and the beginnings of the suffragettes and what they've accomplished and what their movement accomplished. I love the suffragettes very much and lately I've just kind of developed this weird obsession with things that have to do with the suffragettes, which you will see. It will show very soon. But um, I've been meaning to read this one for a while. So this is what I'm choosing for the movement. Now, obviously, going with political movements, there are many books that you could read that have to do with the Black Lives Matter movement, the civil rights movements. There are so many more books on the women's movements. But I think you can play a lot with this prompt and find books that have to do with modes of transportation, like trains or 
boats and you can see that as a form of movement or things to do with you know kinetics and that kind of scientific movement. So for this challenge I actually seem to be lacking a bunch of actual physical books that I own to recommend or even think of books I've read in the past that fit this. But the two that came to my mind recently that I've read or revisited, the first one is The Shipwreck of the Whale Ship Essex. So this is the true narrative that inspired Herman Melville's Moby Dick by Owen Chase. There's a lot of movement in this book in terms of being on a ship and then separating into smaller boats. But this is a horrifying account. Very quick recap. Uh, there were some people on this boat, including Owen Chase. The boat was attacked by a whale and afterwards most of the people on board either died or separated into smaller boats. They were now traveling in complete darkness and did not know where they were going. They ended up finding a few pieces of islands and sometimes people were choosing to stay rather than to go back out on the ocean. Eventually, what happened on the little boats resulted to a lot of cannibalism and some of the survivors included Owen Chase and he wrote his memoirs and eventually these stories circulated and became a little bit more folklorized and people became fascinated about what happened on the whale ship Essex. There is another book on this that actually won the Pulitzer Prize but why I found this kind of cool is that a lot of lives could have been saved if they just stopped moving if they stopped in certain islands earlier, they could have prevented a lot of the horrors that happened. And I don't know why, but when I think of movement, I think of boats. So this would probably be a good one. And in terms of more recent movements, I am a big believer in the death positivity movement. And if you don't know what this is, it's kind of something led by the Order of the Good Death and Caitlin Doty and her book Smoke Kits in Your Eyes is the first of these where it's kind of a memoir of her working in the death industry and realizing how much is not necessary when it comes to burial practices and she kind of started this thing that sparked a lot of other literature other people being interested in this topic and exploring this from various angles and I have reviewed most of them on my death shelf playlist so I'll link that down below. Worth your time and it's worth exploring and thinking about these topics before they become an emergency. Now the third challenge is buzz. Now for this I have brainstormed so many ideas. I don't know why buzz really got me going. I'm going to be reading something that has to do with American politics. So American politics has been all the buzz lately for many reasons, not only because of the upcoming election, which during nonfiction November, I'm really curious where we will be with that. I also realized that Hamilton came out and that was also a big buzzworthy thing. And I realized in all this that I don't know all that much about the founding of America or the founding fathers, what the constitution and the declaration of independence are all about. So I decided to choose this book, John Adams by David McCullough. This book, has been listed as number one in so many lists about history, whether it has to do with the top biography or the top nonfiction US president book. There are so many lists where this has been either number one or among the top three. Recently, there was a mini series from HBO, also by the name of John Adams, with Paul Giamatti playing him. And the guy who plays Jefferson is also the actor who played Stannis Baratheon in Game of Thrones. So I really want to pair these two up and I want to learn more about John Adams and his wife Abigail who was very politically involved for the time that she was living in and I want to know more about the beginnings of America and what the founding fathers actually stood for. So I'm very intrigued to find out. Now, with Buzz, there are so many directions you can take. So my first thought was bees, obviously. And I am certain that Olive will probably have a lot of bee recommendations for this because she's actually read a bunch. But for me, the one that I've read with bees in the title recently has been Telling the Bees. And this is a book by Mark Norman, the host of the Folklore Podcast. And I have done a full review on this book 
but telling the bees is just one of the narratives covered in the book where there was a practice um, in every household where once a person died you had to tell the bees that that person died or else the bees would be upset and leave or die and this just became so popularized that people started doing it but it also covers a few other folklore stories and how they seeped into our practices i found it amazing and I would really highly recommend it. Another one is to think of Buzz as in BuzzFeed and in this case I found a recently published book by a BuzzFeed writer and it's called I like, Can't Even or Can't Even and I've listened to this on audiobook and it's about the millennials being the most burnt out generation and this started out as a BuzzFeed article and now it has been kind of uh, packed with information and resources and it's become a book and what I loved about it is that it didn't just start with we are the most burnt out generation and here's why it kind of started to probe at the beginnings of why this might have happened and it it goes all the way back to the 50s and it goes over you know the the morals of the 50s the the yuppies the gen xers the hippies, like all of the kind of uh, generations that came before and how that influenced this mixture of both values, the way that millennials are raised in terms of being supported and, and loved by their parents in a way that's a lot more lenient and kinder, but at the same time, the world that they're thrown in is very tough and rough and it's very corporate and this kind of creates a lot of uh, stress and people are always kind of into this hustle culture and it's just been so depressing but it has been very informative especially going backwards um, and kind of studying how we got to this point it's a very good uh, social and cultural book another way you can take this buzz thing is to say oh look it's buzz light here on the cover of this book and you could read about uh, animation and pixar and this book has been circulating on booktube, so I won't bore you by telling you more about it, but it kind of looks at the beginnings of Pixar and what kind of rules they've set up and um, why it worked, why it was successful, and looking at kind of the, the founding fathers of Pixar. And on the Buzz note, you can also read Buzz Aldrin's book, which is a memoir slash biography. Or autobiography and you can also combine Buzz Lightyear with Buzz Aldrin and just read a book about space so one that I've read is Chris Hadfield's book um, An Astronaut's Guide to Life I think that's what it's called but he basically recounts his experience of you know learning growing becoming an astronaut and kind of collecting lessons that he's learned from this experience and applying it to everyday life, you know, for people who are just on Earth. Another way you can go with buzz is, you know, what's been all the buzz lately? Like, I don't know, have you guys heard about COVID-19 and the global pandemic? Yeah, me neither. So there have been actually a lot of books already written about COVID-19. Now, I'm not sure I would recommend reading books that are about a topic that hasn't really been completed. I want to see how this ends. And I want to see what happens and what discoveries end up occurring because of it. But if you are interested in the sort of buzz around pandemics, there are two books that I would recommend. The first is The Ghost Map that has to do with cholera, specifically in England. And the second book is about the Spanish flu and its origins in the United States due to a parade where people were not socially distanced and overwhelming the hospitals and not having all of the tools we have and a lot of people died and it this happened in 1918 so uh, there have been a lot of books written on that I'll, I'll post the one I read up here now the last challenge is discovery and with this I actually struggled a lot because I thought of all those like sciencey courses you get in school or social studies where discovery is presented as basically colonialism and then the other kinds of discoveries have to do with like scientists hovering over a microscope and I just could not figure this one out um, I really struggled with finding the right one for me but I have been kind of obsessed with the Edwardian period for some time and 
as I was doing research on clothes or makeup or things to do with the Edwardian period and watching some YouTube videos on it and trying to learn more about their daily habits, I found this blog that was kind of amazing. Everything was so well researched and it went into kind of the really tiny details of everyday life. And upon this, I made a discovery, which is that the author of the blog also wrote a book. So it's called Edwardian England, A Guide to Everyday Life, 1900 to 1914. Sorry, there's like a glare, but um, I am just so thrilled to have found this book. And I'll read you some of the, the contents. So it goes, everyday life, the Edwardian home, cooking and eating, household budgets, below stairs, fashion, uh, politics, the military, Edwardian London. It's gonna go well with the end of October as well. So maybe I'll just start with this one. Now some books that come to mind is Curiosity by Alberto Manguel where he's curious about curiosity and why we are interested in topics and why we want to discover things in the first place uh, which is very meta. Another one that I've read recently and this does have to do a little bit more with the colonialism aspect is a book that I started but have not finished, The Furthest Shore, and this is about Australia being dropped off there, but also kind of discovering the flora and fauna and interacting with the people there. I think for me the most intriguing parts of this have obviously been the points about nature and not knowing, you know, which animals are poisonous, which plants are poisonous, everything being completely new. Um, terrifying but also very exciting and it's very exciting to read about it in hindsight obviously because I would not want to be in that situation so I would love to hear from you I'm really curious what people are reading and what have you decided to choose for these challenges and if I've piqued your interest with any of these books and and do let me know what you think about my choices um, so on that note, I am going to probably get back into Victober now, and I will see you very soon. Bye!